constitute part of the middle class. Now, many of the things that you and I take for granted, unfortunately for the critical mass of our people, is not the case. I always use this example, if you may allow. Just imagine of a, a young girl from Ahaman Skral, huge potential, passes a metric with flying colors, and gets to be accepted at the University of Pretoria to study medicine. For those of you who don't know, we've got a student accommodation shortage of about 56,000 beds in the city of Tuan. So she can get accommodation, but she's got a sponsor that is willing to pay for the accommodation. So unfortunately, she can find accommodation, and the sponsor says as the condition we can only pay if you get accommodation in university-owned residence. So unfortunately, she has to commute home. Now, Aman Skral from University of Pretoria is about 65 kilometers. The last bus is at 6 in the evening. So she has to be there quarter to 6 to get home around 8 in the evening. So they get to be given an, an assignment on the, the study of the human anatomy. She doesn't have access to the library. The information center that is there, that is open 24 hours, is available to everyone. But she has to go home because of her conditions. She stays in a shack. They don't have electricity. Fortunately, she has charged the phone. Her friend charged for her when she got to the university or in the lecture theater. So she's able to get home, use the internet and able cell phone, go to one of our free Wi-Fi sites, research the human anatomy, does her assignment, and is able to submit like everyone else. Now the ability of that young girl to become a medical doctor is not a function of a social or economic standing. It's a function of her appetite to research and discover new knowledge. So you have transformed how people relate to this space. So it's about that. When the World Bank talks about internet connectivity, is the potential that it holds to transform and make sure that we deal with the digital divide. As I speak to you, we've got the largest coverage of free Wi-Fi sites of any country in the whole world. Undermine, underline any country in the whole world. There are offerings that you find in New York, New York some of the leading um, capital city in the developed country, but it's not for free. You pay for it. In this instance, it's free, 250 megabytes per day, 7.5 gigabytes per month. That's what we give to our communities. If it's for educational sites, the access is limitless. So you can do anything that you want to. And obviously, there are sites that are not allowed. You, they are prohibited from using for obvious reasons. So we are expanding this. We are going to spend half a billion to do that. That's how we are transforming this space, so that the poor also feel that they are part of uh, this space that we are creating. And we are of the opinion that to create a better society, you need to deal with other social aspects. There's a big problem in our city, in our townships, you know, the problem of substance abuse. Hitherto has been associated with affluence. Only the rich kids could afford this, but now the prices uh, have come down. I don't know whether it's a function of the recession or it's a market on its own. So there's something, a concoction called Nyaube, which is ravaging our communities. Our view is that it underlines, well, well the, the, the primary problem is an economic problem. It's just a manifestation of a bigger problem. But you need to make interventions in those spaces. And that's why we're investing close to 50 million to find solutions to address that. And part of it is to make sure that we skill young people. For those of you who don't know, 66% of the population in Tswani is 35 years and younger. 51% is 28% and younger. I'm saying 50, 28, 51% of the population is 28 years and younger. And that's why I explain our interventions with regards to free Wi-Fi, because we are a youthful population. But I think it's important that when you want to address now, you must be able to skill young people. So we have initiated a program called SEPO 10,000. We are using our fiscals. The fiscals is your money, the city's money, which is about 30 billion per annum. So we take 1% of that, about 300 million, invest it in businesses that are owned by these young people. We took them through training. It's 10,000 of them. That's why we call it SEPO 10,000. It's for the age group between 21 and 35 years of age. If you ask what happens to those who are less than 21, 
they are not supposed to be working, they, must, they are supposed to be in class learning and studying. So we are catering 21 until 35. They create their own cooperatives. We use our buying power to the tune of that uh, 300 million to make sure that we support those businesses so that they see themselves as creators of opportunity as opposed to having a parasitical relationship with the city, taking, taking and not creating opportunities. If you look at successful economies in the world, the biggest employer, unlike here, is not the public sector, it's not government. I mean, if you go to rural areas, I can vouch that, and this is anecdotal, but I suspect it's also true, could, will, can be validated, right? 80% of employment is with, has something to do with government. So if you look at successful economies, Singapore, South Korea in the main, it's small, medium businesses that are creating employment opportunities. So it's about building on the entrepreneurial skills of young people to make sure that they create opportunities for others, but they need a start. So the catalyst for that is for us to invest that 300 million of our money. And then you must create spaces for young people to interact. That's why we are experienced, we are investing a, an inordinate amount of money in building up sporting facilities in the township. We are greening all the sports facilities in Swan. I mean, some of you like here, I'm sure when you grew up, when you played football, it was normal to play on a gravel road. Now it's not going to be normal. It's going to be very early. When a young person, oh, I'm not going to say I'm 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 sure will be better enhanced uh, going forward. So we're investing that kind of money, but it's not just only on football. I'm using that as an example. I mean, we are a maker of sports in the country. We are producing um, champions here. The Blue Bulls, the most uh, successful rugby franchise. Uh, this might create problems. Mamelodi Sundowns, historically, yeah, if like you allow us, historically, since the inception of the PSL, combination of Mamelodi Sundowns and Super Sport are the most successful. Those are facts. Yeah, it's nothing. We are not bashing. I'm just saying these are the facts that the Titans uh, in uh, cricket, and now we've got uh, beautiful young people. The, sec the first princess ne? is from here. From the remote, some place called, uh, uh, she gets very angry with me when I say, it's some remote place called Brongol Springs, we brought them closer. <laughs> so at least they didn't just bring burdens, they brought beauties also. So we're excited that we're doing that. And then there's uh, the, the, the field of the art. You know, I lament the fact that, and by the way, we are principally responsible, I tell my colleagues, that there are cities that are claiming to be the home of jazz when you know the origins and the roots of jazz. And it's because we are not investing a lot ourselves. So I want to say with you that we have taken a new tech, we are investing in that space. Uh, the, the performing arts, judge is here, an exceptional talent that we have been able to expose to the whole world. And suddenly people are becoming alive to what is possible. So now it's fashionable for people to take the root of the performing arts thanks to the work that Njaji is doing, thanks to the work that Brabiza is doing. Yes, so, and, and, and the problem is, we lament the fact that, God forbid, when they, with their demise, when they, uh, an, eternal, an eternal life, the other side, we say they die in paupers. So it's important that it's the city that must inject, invest, so that we show faith in our own. And I'm sure it's a conversation that the Blessing and the team will have with the performing arts to say this is the kind of interventions that we're making. And Bratim and Brabop, one of the things that we're doing is to help community radio stations, help them with the money to buy the infrastructure, not to tell our story and lie about that which we are doing, but to tell the real facts, but create an opportunity for budding presenters TV personalities, radio personalities to start somewhere. You, you have the natural talent. I guess you might have found it difficult to get that opportunity. We want to create these, uh, these opportunities and break the ceiling and say that it's possible you can do it. Atrejil will be having its own, Peli FM, Mamelodi has, Soshanguve has, TUT has. So it's a broad array of these opportunities. Rugby hitherto has been associated with white people who are working with the Blue Bulls to take it to the township. For many of you who don't know, there's a, the proportion of this, the supporters of the Blue Bulls is significantly black. 
That's the transformation we are talking about. So it must start at the grassroots level. And we are going to talk, cease to talk about quotas because there will be this big pool of players that uh, you can't ignore. That in fact, on merit, we are able to uh, select people. So I, I thought that it's important that we share snippets of some of the things that we are doing. We will share with you in the state of the capital address the detail uh, in its comprehensiveness of the interventions that we are making. We simply invited you one to say, we, think, we still think that this is your home. We still think that you must continue to have a relationship with this home called Tswan. But Tswan also appreciate that there's, um, there's some amount of investment we must make so that we are able to make sure that this association is enduring. But also to begin a process over time to share with you some of the things that we are doing and also to get feedback and use your influence to share with the general public that Tswane is a better place to live in, that in fact we are creating a united society irrespective of race, gender and uh, your social standing. So thank you very much for making time. We're looking forward to growing this relationship.